Hey, what's going on guys? So no matter what profession you're in, you, there's always pros and cons. And I think a lot of times when you go online and you watch these day in the life of a software developer videos, things like that, it can often give you a, a false sense of what it's really like to be a developer because they only show uh, the good parts in a lot of cases. So, I mean, I get it. I try to keep my videos positive and, and I think overall being a developer is one of the best career paths that you can take in terms of money, job security, and just doing something you're passionate about. However, there are downsides. There are just everyday frustrations that you're going to run into. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, I don't want to just sit here and complain and bitch about stuff. So we'll go over some of the negatives, but I'll also offer my own opinion and some insight on how you can deal with some of these issues that you will come across at some point. So the first issue that I want to talk about is uh, unreasonable deadlines. And this applies to everyone, whether you're working for a company uh, or, you know, where someone else sets a deadline, or if you're freelancing, you're dealing with client deadlines, or even if you're building your own projects or you create content, you, you might even set your own unreasonable deadlines, which is something that, that I've often done. Um, so when this happens, Regardless of how crappy you think the deadline is, if it's already been set, ask yourself, is it truly impossible to meet? Uh, and I say this because I'm not a fan of constantly changing deadlines and pushing them back because I think it can lead to some bad habits. I've, I've seen it lead to bad habits. So that's why I think it's really important to analyze the project and come up with some reasonable estimations. And I also think that the people that are actually doing the work and writing the code should have the most say, or at least some say, in the, the deadlines. And unfortunately, that's not the case for many people. Uh, if you're working directly with clients and you're setting the deadline, don't be too optimistic. You know, don't tell them three weeks just to make them happy when you know it's going to take four or five, but maybe you can squeeze it in three weeks. Uh, what I would do is set it for six, and then if you're done earlier than that, that's a nice surprise to them. So if you really think that you can't meet a deadline, if there's any way that you can change it without upsetting your bosses or clients, um, you could try that. I know that that doesn't always work. You can't always move it back. So I would advise you to try and not stress about it as hard as that is. Uh, I'm not religious, but I am a recovering addict. And we used to say the serenity prayer a lot. And, and I found that super helpful, not just in addiction, but for just about every area of my life. And part of it says, accept the things you cannot change, change the things you can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. So know what you can change, you know. Um, if you can't change your situation, then do your best to work within it. I think that the more stress you put on yourself, the less productive you're going to be, and you're going to just get into a very negative cycle. Now, if you're on a team, be sure to communicate with them and work together in sync. Uh, everyone should know where everyone else is at. So if you do have a bottleneck, you can identify that quickly. I think communication is key, whether you're working on a team or you're working directly with clients. The next one is dealing with managers or clients that are not developers and in some cases not very tech savvy at all. This is something that can be very frustrating. And I've seen it over and over where developers work under managers that have little to no software knowledge. And again, this ties into the whole deadline thing because a lot of times these are the people that are setting your deadlines. Um, and that can be pretty frustrating. I, I personally think that in order to be any kind of manager, you should at least know some of the technical details that are, are going into a project. Um, but hopefully, even if you do have a manager that doesn't understand the technical parts and doesn't understand programming, hopefully they make an effort to communicate with you to try and understand so they can make good decisions and good estimates. I think that's what, what makes a good, a good manager. Now, if you're a freelancer, you know how difficult it can be to deal with some clients. And uh, most of them don't understand software. If they did, they probably wouldn't be hiring you. So this is frustrating in a lot of different ways. Um, for me, I knew when I would quote out projects and you know they would make counter offers and we go back and forth, it would be frustrating because they didn't understand what went into the work. You know, They wanted me to create like Facebook for them in a week and pay $1,000. So that can be really aggravating. Um, but what can you do about this? You, you obviously can't tell them to go and learn JavaScript or Python and so they can understand. What you can do is try and explain what you're doing in a way that they can understand. Um, describe how long certain tasks are going to take you. 
Uh, and, and again, try not to get too aggravated because typically the more stressed you are, the, the, the less you're able to think clearly and get things done. So remember, accept what you can't change and do your best um, to do the work within the parameters that you're given. So the next thing can be really frustrating, and that's working with other people's code. Because everybody, every developer works in different ways. You know, they write their code in different ways, and it can be tough to make sense of it, even if it's a language that you're, or you're pretty comfortable with, even if it's a framework that, that, you're, that you're pretty comfortable with. Um, and there's different scenarios where you'll run into code that was written by other people. You know, as a freelancer, I was often asked to add features or update existing projects. And sometimes the code that I was given was really tough to work with. And sometimes I even had to tell the, to cl tell the client that I would have to build this from scratch or I can't, I'll have to pass on it. Um, and I'm not saying that it's always because the code was, was crap or that I thought I was so much better or anything like that. Sometimes it was the code was too advanced for me, you know? So, uh, I mean, as a freelancer, you, sometimes you can do that. But when it comes to a company, I think that this is one of the biggest things that people are not prepared for uh, is getting a code base thrown at them, a lot of which is old legacy code. I think that when you, you're, we get, we're getting started following tutorials, things are going well, and you get a job and you think you're going to be able to like start from scratch and, and use whatever technologies you want, and unfortunately, working at a company doesn't really work like that, and it can be really overwhelming. So some things you can do when working with other people's code is you can try and talk to the past developer if that's, if that's, a, uh, you know, if that's possible. If it's a team member or something, sit down with them, have them explain the stuff to you that you don't understand. Uh, in many cases, though, the initial developer is not available. So I would suggest that you, you know, find, find the starting point, find the index file, step through the code line for line, uh, get to know the folder and file structure and how things work. If there's any written tests, you can run those. Pay attention to comments. Uh, try to understand the, the other developer's way of approaching certain tasks. Uh, and then again, don't be too hard on yourself. Personally, I think that this is one of the hardest parts of being a developer. Uh, is is just dealing with with people's past work, and that's why I love what I do now and just being able to build my own projects. But unfortunately, usually it's not like that. So the next one is just the the rapid pace at which technology is changing. You know, nothing in technology is constant. Whether it's the iPhone in your pocket or a React app you're working on, it's just always changing and always updating. And I think imposter syndrome is huge in software development because of this. You know, there's just so much to learn and there's so much available. And if that isn't enough, it, it's always changing. Um, you know, you might find some kind of package or library, something that makes your life easier. And then all of a sudden it's deprecated and you have to find something new. Um, or you finally finish a project or in my case, finish a course. And then React Router 6 is released and screws everything up. So, you know, people think making courses is easy, but it's like you make, you do something and then a month later it goes out of date and that can be really frustrating. And that happens to, to every type of developer. Uh, and I experience it all the time as a, a, a content creator. But I think the best way to handle this is to just keep learning. Uh, if you don't like to learn, then you're probably gonna fall behind as a developer. I think that it's just a requirement uh, even if you've been doing this for 30 years, you can still easily fall behind because of the, the pace that things change. So just try to stay informed, whether that's, you know, reading blogs, documentation, courses, whatever, whatever uh, you use to stay up to date. So the last one is kind of personal and something that doesn't affect every developer, but is something that I see, I've seen a lot of and I've experienced a lot of, and that's isolation and loneliness. Now, I know that being a developer at a large company, you know, if you work at Google and, uh, you know, you, you're not remote, you go in, it's, it's really social, but not all dev jobs are like that. And of course, if you freelance or run a small company, it's not like that. Uh, a lot of the dev jobs these days are remote, so you're working from home and you're spending a lot of time by yourself in front of a screen. And, and I think that that can do a, a number on your mental health. So I'm the type of person that likes my alone time. I could probably spend a week by myself, not talk to anybody, and, uh, and I'd be fine. Any longer than that, I'd start to miss my family because I do have a wife and kids. If I didn't, I'm sure I could go much longer. 
However, that's not very healthy. You know, that's, that's not good for anyone's mental health. Even if you do have the ability to do it, uh, I think humans are, you know, we're social creatures and we weren't made to just be alone in a room all day looking at a screen. And uh, I think if you do have this type of job, you should really try and have some kind of social life. If you don't have a significant other, uh, maybe find, you know, see if you can hang out with some friends. If you don't have many friends, family members, uh, brothers, sisters, parents, whatever. If you have nobody at all, which some people don't, uh, maybe you can find like a meetup or something and it, it can even be tech related. I know for me, even though I do like being alone, sometimes I just get into my, my own head too much. Uh, if something's bothering me or if maybe I don't feel great physically, I'll start to really focus on that and I don't have much of much external activity to, to kind of take my mind off stuff. So for me, I'm grateful that I can just go upstairs at the end of the day and hang out with my family. Uh, but I feel like if I didn't have that, I'd probably go nuts after a while. So um, definitely just something to think about. You know, it's it. there's a lot of isolation in this in this type of industry. All right, guys, so hopefully this didn't come off as too negative. I just like to be realistic. And the fact is you will have these little aggravations. And these are just some of them. These definitely aren't all of them. Um, but it's important to try and learn how to, how to handle these situations. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.